Hello everyone, this is Joaquin Martinez at Evolve. Today I'm going to show you how to add a timer reference window within your 3D workspace in Pixera. Let's get to it. Okay, here we go. This is how I personally build a timer reference window within Pixera for me to track time between queues or during queues or transitions with time and time code. We get a lot of ask on how to do something similar to this, so just to keep a little bit better visual representation of time. This is just how I personally do this. But There's probably a million different other ways to achieve this with Antic Sarah, but again, this is just my little workflow that works for me and is very efficient for me. So here we go. If you're watching this, I'm only going to assume you understand how to build text resources and color resources within Pixaras, okay? So let me start at the very beginning. So I have three screens here in this little visual representation of what I have going on here. Uh, so this screen will, will represent a widescreen LED. We're going to fly in opening videos, tip videos, and we're going to track all this with time. This window is going to act as a prompter screen. Uh, I have a time code generator here going into my lap programming laptop, and we are going to chase time code and track it with time as well. This window is timer reference window is what I like to call it. Uh, it's just a dummy screen literally going to nothing, but it can go to something later on. Again, this workflow is just very efficient for me. Okay. So. Let's get into what I have as far as a composition. So starting within what I have going on here, I have built four timelines, okay? Uh, one will be our time-coded timeline, our PIP timeline, and our widescreen timeline. And we're going to literally take over these text resources with timers. Think of this as a timer, or I'm sorry, a text modification, if you will. We are going to get into this here momentarily, but again, this is just what I have going on here, uh, just to show the uh, example of how I do this. Okay. So again, we're going to go, we're going to go back to how we build this screen. And all I did was build a background color. Um, I like to keep a dark color. It's just a little bit easier on the eyes and three text resources that I have just placed in my screen here. The text resources, this is very important and it's going to come into play later. As you're building this, just be sure you are super crystal clear on the labeling of what the text is. Okay, this will come into play here momentarily. Okay, so to get back into timelines, then we'll get into the good part. I have built a few timelines here, but I want to point something out before I get into how it's done. Okay. So I have this uh, pip timeline with three just cues uh, to play out. But in order for this to completely work and make sense, you are going to need marker cues. Okay. What this is just going to take over is the time reference between the cues. Okay. So very important to use your marker cues for this. Otherwise, uh, the timer is just going to roll and roll and roll and you're not, the Pixar is not really going to know what to reference for, for this to make sense. Okay. So again, very important to have your marker cues. So let me go ahead and start at the very beginning of this. Okay. So all my uh, timers and screens, uh, I'm sorry, timelines and screens are cleared out. So. For us to accomplish this text modifier, for us to have this timer reference window, we're going to use control. So once you are in control, you're going to need a few things. One of them is those awesome text resources that you've built. Remember earlier how I said, just be super, super obvious, of the labeling of the text resource, because here is what you're where you're going to be able to grab that text resource for you to modify. Okay. You're going to notice two of them already, uh, grayed out. Uh, and that's because I've already kind of pre-built this to expedite this, uh, video here. So 
what we're going to do is port over our resource. Okay. So I've already grabbed my pip resource, time code resource, and our widescreen resource here. So if you expand this out, you're going to notice quite a bit of string commands here within the module. The one you want to accomplish this is set text strings. I tend to work pretty quick. So with, once I see the word usage a bunch of times, it's usually right after that. So, and I hope that doesn't change in the near future. So, <laughs> so that's just how I quickly do this. Okay. So now you have grabbed your reference. Uh, I'm sorry, your text reference for you to accomplish this. Okay. If we get back to the very front end of our composition, you're going to notice everything in text still. So nothing's been connected as of yet. Okay. Let me get to my widescreen timeline. I personally love working within my control UI and having my timeline visible. Not only it's visible here, but if you're programming a bunch of things, you have it visible, uh, you have your, all of your auxiliary timelines or your multiple timelines visible here as well. So that little toggle is right up here on the top. Very cool. <laughs> Next thing you're going to need is oh. this module right here. So if you collapse down tools, let me bring this all up. So under your library, you're going to see the tools banner here for us to drop this down. If you scroll down and get to your Pixera helpers drop down, you're going to notice you have a few pre-built uh, helper modules, you know, already done for you. So the one I want is timeline info. Okay. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this to our UI here. And by default, you're going to start, start seeing some timer information here. Um, so this is everything that's going to be in relation of that timeline. Okay. Right now there's nothing really set, uh, but you do start seeing some information pop in. Okay. By default, it's going to reference, uh, the widescreen or whatever screen that it wants to default to. So let's point this to the appropriate screen okay. okay so again i've already built a pip and a time code timeline info module so if we select the top banner of our timeline info let's label this timeline info wide screen boom and now you know i can keep track of which time uh timeline info module this is okay we're not quite done yet okay under your inspector side of your module, we already renamed it, uh, but now we need to point it to a timeline for this to really be efficient. Okay. Right now it's just set to selected timeline, but let's officially point it to the correct timeline. Boom. So now this is officially tied into the widescreen timeline. And now we can program and connect this all, um, and watch it roll. So the next little step, what we need is our next queue dropdown folder. Okay. What we want to do is get the countdown information for us to modify the text that we have in our screen over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug our countdown information to our set text string command within our timer resource or our text resource. I'm sorry. So now if we go back to comp uh, compositing and then we hit play, now the widescreen text is going to be taken over by the timer information. So here's when now we're tracking five, four, three, two, one. And now we're getting to our Q marker. So now if I hit space bar again, now we have six, six seconds, five, four, three, two, one, and we are out. Well, technically I have a pause cue there for us to fade out, but I think you get the point. Okay. All right. Now that this was the introduction on how to tie this together, let me go ahead and add in the pip one. Okay. I already built the pip 
um, module here. However, I haven't tied it to a timeline. Okay. So let's go ahead and reference it to the pips timeline. Let's get our pip resources resource here. Let's tie it to our set text string. Um, set text string. So now if you go back to compositing, you still see the pep te uh, pip text here. And let's go ahead and just get to our uh, timeline, roll it. Now it's gonna be taken over by the time to, uh, information that you need here. 23 seconds. So one cool part, if you're doing something a little bit more elaborate with timeline, that you need to keep track of what's in between your cues, this will totally keep track of the in-between. For example, if you're working on an insta like a theater show or a theme park show where you need to know when the next cue is, this is an awesome reference uh, for that, okay? So here we are, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we are out. All right, the next bit is a uh, time code. Okay, for those of us that work within time code, this is how we can grab that time code time information for us to chase. Okay, let's go ahead and get our time code um, timeline going. Okay, so yes, you do have this toggle here that will grab this information. But I'm just going to show you how to do this in the reference window because why not, right? So again, it'll probably give you another little uh, five minutes on, with me on how to do this. But let's go ahead and just grab this information. So the setup I have here um, is I have a fast forward um, time code generator going into a focus right, going into my laptop here. And we are literally going just to tie this uh, layer within Simpty for the, everything to track and for us to chase this content, okay? So again, this would be, let's say it's an imaginary prompter screen for the performer to keep track of lyrics, okay? So let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, the the Pixar manual is has really good information when you're working with timecode. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with timecode, let me go ahead and roll it. Yeah, ouch, that's what it sounds like. Okay, so let me go ahead and back up a little bit. You already knows, notice uh, the content sort of tracking here. Uh, I'm sorry, tracking within the screen. Now let's just tie it together within our control. Okay, so I've already built this here. I have my time code, timeline info module built. Let's point it to our time code layer, uh, timeline. I'm sorry. Let me slow down a little bit. Stop a little bit. Let's collapse this down. So this one's a little bit different and I want to point this out. So as opposed to getting the next queue with your timeline info builder, because we are just chasing time code. All we want is the time information within the timeline. Okay, you're not going to notice any cue markers here because we haven't added because literally it's just going to play once we fire off uh, code here. Okay, so let's just grab our time information, plug it to our set text string command, go back to compositing. And now if I fire off code, Rip. now that information is visible within your timer reference window. Again, this is just my little way of doing this on how to keep uh, time within Pixera. I wanted to thank you for your time and I hope this information has been useful. Thank you.